LDW MMA seat is your boy the coach you're live 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 on the coach and show the coach and show live okay guys in this video I'm gonna pretty much tell you what exactly happened to Leslie Smith and I'm, I'm just gonna tell y'all and that's just the way that is so Leslie Smith got definitely the biggest fight of her career coming up you know I mean that, that fight's gonna be here and you know Leslie you know they still asking her about this whole thing about her getting a union I'm going to tell you why that failed. I'm going to tell you exactly why it failed. And I'm going to tell you, it actually could have worked. The thing of it is, though, is Leslie Smith's tact. It's how she went about trying to get it done. See, Leslie told a whole bunch of people who couldn't shut the hell up. She told a whole bunch of people. And see, then, you know, what she was doing is she was at UFC events and venues. And she was talking to people, okay, about a union. Now, you, you got to understand where I'm going with this, okay, because... If you, let's, let's say if you're in somebody's house, right? You're in somebody else's crib and you sitting there and you're in a crib and you talking bad about their crib while you're in their crib. Do you think people are going to want you in their house or are they going to put you out? Chances are, if you're talking about somebody in their own house, they're going to put you the hell out. Okay. You gone. That's it. Done. You're out of there. It's the same thing. You know, Leslie Smith was in a UFC's house. And, you know, you're trying to start a union right up under their nose and you didn't think they were going to find out. Like you're at UFC events and you're running up to people, you know, telling them about this union, giving them information on it. Well, the UFC, they're going to find the UFC. They don't want a union. They don't want these fighters to unionize. So they got to, you know, God forbid, give them more <laughs> than what they what they asked for. No, they don't want that because a union for the UFC to them is bad. It's bad for business. And she even talked about, you know, George St. Pierre, you know, he's supposed to have a boxing match with Oscar De La Hoya, but he couldn't do that because of his UFC contract. And see, what Leslie was trying to say is that a union could prevent them, you know, the UFC from, you know, actually telling fighters they can't do things outside. Like, you know, at Bellator, if you fight for Bellator, you know, they're allowed to go outside and do other stuff. They can fight for other promotions if they want to, whoever's going to pay them money. They can go out and box if they want to, you know, like Bellator and even the PFL, they have those options, you know, but the UFC, it's like once you sign a contract, that's it. You can't do anything else. The only thing that the UFC that I've known them to let you actually do is that submission underground. That's it. But it can't be any punches. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. And I, this is a sidebar. It's crazy that, you know, Dana White said, well, you know, I'm not going to do business with the UFC, but they'll sign like these little contracts, right, for these for their fighters to do submission underground to compete against Bellator opponents as long as they're not throwing punches or strikes. As long as they're not throwing strikes, they're good to go. And, and that's something. You know, they can't make a Cyborg and Nunez 2 fight. They, they can't do that. But they can book these submission underground fights. I mean, how are you going to explain it? But thing of it is, is that the union would be a lot better for fighters. But see, promoters like the UFC, they're not trying to hit it. And so they did what any big business did that's trying to threaten the bottom line. is They, they got Leslie smoothed the hell out of there. They put Leslie up out of there. They bought Leslie. They, look, they, they got Leslie out of there so damn fast. Leslie ain't even had to fight her last fight. Like her, her damn opponent, <laughs> her damn opponent pulled out. Okay, it was Aspen Land. Aspen Land pulled out of the fight. And instead of having Leslie hang around for another fight, they just paid Leslie Smith. They gave her $75,000, told her to get the hell out. <laughs> that, that's what they did. They paid her seventy five grand because they didn't want Leslie hanging around for another fight. They had to get her out of there, and they got her out of there fast. And I'm telling you, man, that, that's what happened. But it didn't work because she talked too much. Like, you're telling too many people. See, what Leslie needed to do, and this is why a coach needed to be an advisor to a lot of these fighters, this is what she needed to do. She would have came to me, hey, coach, I'm going to start a union, but I don't know how to go about doing it. Okay, I said, this is what you do. Okay, this is what you do. First of all, you get 10 fighters that you know and you trust that won't say anything while you're trying to get this thing off the ground. Talk to 10 fighters, okay? You get them on board with you. Like, you know, George St. Pierre tried to do the same thing, but then the UFC gave George St. Pierre a bag literally to shut the hell up and come on board. They gave him a bag. They gave George St. Pierre a big contract, and George St. Pierre abandoned talks of a union. They shut, They paid George St. Pierre off. But Leslie, get 10 fighters you trust, 10 fighters you know that won't, that won't say anything, that keep their mouth shut. And you say, hey, so-and-so, hey, so-and-so, keep your damn mouth shut. We're trying to make it better for all of us. You get these people on board, okay? You get them on board, and then once you get these people on board, you got a stable backbone of fighters who gonna, and, and, and 
not only just, you know, people on board, but you get some real legit fighters. She know friends with top level fighters that think the stuff going on wrong too. She know them. You get enough of those type fighters in your corner, well, you know, what are the UFC gonna do? They can't cut all their top stars. They can't cut them all, okay? See, when you get enough stars like the McGregors of the world, when you get, you know, like, like the Holmes of the world, when you get the Nunez's of the world, when you get those fighters, and I'm not saying that they're friends with Leslie Smith, I'm saying, but when you get fighters like that, when they stop and they start doing stuff and they start taking notice, and then stuff start happening, they, they can't cut everybody because the UFC don't want to lose all their stars. See, the problem is that Leslie Smith, she's not a big enough star. She's not a big enough star. If Leslie had that kind of star power, Leslie could demand that. And she could actually have a union and wouldn't be no problem. See, when you don't, when you don't have the following, when you don't have a star power like that, when you're essentially a nobody in the world of WMMA, because I don't nobody know who you are, you have to be tactful. You have to undercoverly get this stuff done. Okay, you can't tell a whole bunch of people. You can't go running your mouth. You can't go to the UFC events. Man, you got to talk to these people off scenes. You got to talk to them behind the scenes. You got to tell them what the scoop is. You got to tell these people, look, now, you know, we're trying to get some future bags. We want some movie deals. We want to do commercials. We want to do boxing. Look, but we can't do that if, if this ball hit an asshole won't allow us to do other stuff outside of his damn contract. And it's not like everybody getting these multi-million dollar contracts. That's a hand few. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's just a handful of people getting those kind of contracts. You got people like Leslie who, you know, Leslie wasn't making a whole lot of money. Not really. She wasn't making that much. So, I mean, yeah, for her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does affect her bottom line. But you got to learn how to shut up. When I opened my gym, man, I told a couple of people who said it ain't going to work. And then and I figured out that, you know what, I can't say that, man. I can't tell nobody what I'm doing. Because these people, they're going to undermine what you're trying to do. They're going to go behind your back and talk about you. They're going to, you know, talk about how you ain't going to get the job done. They're going to do what they can to stop your emotion. I've noticed that whenever you're trying to go do something. And Leslie could have had a movement. She could have had this thing going, man. She could have had it going. She, it could have worked. But you run your mouth. And so when you get enough people in the UFC that know what you're doing, the people on top, they quickly got her out of it. And you can't complain because you're in somebody else's house. And you're trying to mess up. You're trying to ruin what they got in their house. You're trying to tear the place up. And, and they're not going to let you do that. I mean, I understand in a union, to me, it would be a good thing. These fighters can get they just do. They can get they just do. But you're in somebody else's house, man. You got to do it. You got to do it. I mean, you can't. You got to do it sneaky. You got to do it sneaky. But, you know, and then you, you get you find enough people. You get the right people because you're talking to these people behind the scene. You just go up to them at an event and say, hey. I need, to, I need to talk to you about something. I want, I want to really talk to you. Uh, hey, what, what's a good number I can reach you with? If she'd have done that to about 10 people, you know what would have happened? Less likely, you know, it will be it will be less likely that these people, that it would get out that, hey, you know, so-and-so is doing this. No, because people are going to try to keep stuff like that behind the scenes. Now, the problem for Leslie would have been telling the wrong person. That's what she couldn't do, tell the wrong person. But most people, they're not... They wouldn't have entertained that because a lot of people don't want to lose their contract. And a lot of people, they work their whole life to get to the UFC, and they think that these contracts that Dana White given that this is the end-all, be-all. Hell, yeah, you got some damn fighters, you know, they excited to wear the damn uniform. I remember, man, I had a fighter, man, years ago when I tried to interview her. She said, well, you know, I just, I really just got in the UFC, and, you know, um, I, don't, I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize my contract. And, and I'm just like, what? I said, what contract? You're only making about, what, 12 grand a fight. <laughs> you, I mean, I, I guess that 12 grand in that Reebok uniform back then, boy, that used to be something. That 12 grand in that Reebok uniform must have been in there. But some fighters, they think they think they have arrived, y'all, when they get that uniform and they get they get what they get from the UFC. They think so. And they just happy to say I'm a UFC fighter. And it's, a lot of times, a lot of the fighters, man, they, they, they broke, they can't even rub a couple of nickels together. They can't rub two nickels together. And, and, but they happy that UFC uniform means everything to them. And then they begin to get these personas like they're larger than life, like they're bigger than everybody. Like they're too good. You know, like your Roxanne Mott Affairs of the world. You know, those people. Folks, I understand what Leslie's trying to do, but Leslie, you, you got cyborg problems right now. You got a big ass, mean cyborg ready to whoop your ass. And you just sitting around here thinking about a damn union? How about this, when Chris Cyborg unionized your forehead again? When she unionized your forehead again? Well, 
Would it have been worth the money? 